What is it? Muddy. It's muddy. We got Mr. Ken Roxon. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Jack, how are we going to do today? How does first place sound? I like that. All right. Just keep it on two wheels and not get stuck in this slop. One wheel, man. Front end light. That's right. Front end light. off to a great start on this final lap. We're coming at you from Battle Creek, Michigan today for the opening round of the 2022 District 14 Hare Scramble Series. And let's just say they didn't need to water the track today. I'm riding Team C today with Deck Andercheck as my teammate. And I'm gonna jump back and forth between lap two and lap four, uh, the two laps that I rode here today. had just under nine miles here today combination of some two or three wide track like you're seeing here uh, a lot of single track and we had probably a mile maybe 1.2 miles of moto and uh, you know the conditions led to a uh, environment that the track became extremely rutted out a lot of roots obviously in the trees and whatnot so it made for a, uh, a rough day uh, at least for me not a good rut rider in general and uh, then you add the roots on top of that and I just felt like I was fighting the bike all day long um, part of it's bad technique part of it's I haven't ridden much up to this point and didn't really set myself up for success to begin with I think I've ridden a total of uh, 10 miles uh, before coming into this event today we rode the, uh, the family enduro last week uh, over in Roselawn, Indiana. That's the only bike time, only seat time I've had this year so far, but needless to say, it was uh, opening round and it's good to see everybody's faces again. Uh, talk to people you haven't seen in, in several months and we had, we had a lot of fun here today. This being lap two, I've got some of the, the A and maybe even some of the top B riders beginning to come through and, and putting us C riders a lap down. So 
they the row one started uh, 15 minutes in front of what we did on this course so they got a bit of a, a jump out in front of us obviously they're much faster through through the train than what we are so they're already just on lap two already putting us a lap down Here on the left you'll see a Suzuki without push button start technology. No, I joke, that was Calvin Granger. He was a, another Team C rider that was that was right there that was switching riders there the same place that Deck and I were. But for real though, that's Suzuki technology. Let's let's uh, let's bring it up to speed here. talking with Deck after the race and after I had a chance to review some of this video and watch it back and I said man this, this GoPro just doesn't really show the true depth of, of what some of these ruts were out there today and how rough it was you know the camera stabilization on these new GoPros is so so superb that you look like you're on rails out there just kind of gliding across the, the terrain but it's uh, much different feel on the bike obviously in the you know you're taking so much more of the the jolting and you see me shaking my arms there man i had arm pump so bad uh, during this race and you know I've, I've experienced that before but nothing to the level that i had today and i think again it just comes down to i was fighting the, bat, the bike a lot in these ruts and probably not in not in good body or good riding position but um the only part of the track I was I was looking forward to, and I'm, I'm not a moto guy. I don't really like jumping, don't like moto tracks in general, but I was looking forward to getting out there because it was smooth. I didn't have the ruts, the ruts to deal with, and I just felt more comfortable on the moto than I did on this, uh, this single track here today.
my daughter was Alexis was riding in the, the morning session on her 65 her KTM 65 and uh, she got stuck in a rut somewhere on lap three I think and uh, was just there trying to get out spin her tire spin her tire well eventually her it was she was in so deep the rut was so deep that she picked up a, a rock and a bunch of debris and her, her chain and uh, it ended up getting so tight that the bike wouldn't even spin the rear tire anymore. And so her, her race ended prematurely. She was uh, having a pretty good ride for herself and uh, felt pretty good uh, about the way she was riding up until that point. So disappointed she didn't get to finish, but um, she's she's improved over last year for sure and is making, making better time out there, feeling more confident and comfortable on the bike compared to where she was a year ago. So that's always good to see. section of track I don't remember ever riding before I don't know if this was property that they've always had or just not utilized or if it's new property that they acquired recently but uh, nice to have a little grass track out here There's my first graceful dismount of the day. I've got a couple more of those, and then one is probably not so graceful. Jumping over to lap four, uh, there, I didn't get the full lap two uh, for one reason or another. My camera just shut off midway through lap two, so uh, we'll, we'll jump back and forth here. I, I get bits and pieces of lap two, and I get bits and pieces of lap four. I think I got the majority of lap four, but the video will show the complete lap, and then we'll just jump back and forth and pick up where that other video left off. In total, um, I did get the entire lap of video. I had a camera on Braid today as well. He was racing, uh, what was it, 13 to 24 year old class. And it was a new mount I had on his, his helmet, something I've not used before. And I'm gonna, gonna have to figure something else out because the camera angle was too low. I, I thought it looked too low before the race and thought it might work. But after watching the footage back, it was just like all handlebars. And you could see about 10 feet in front of him. So it wasn't wasn't good quality video so may may uh change mounts out may try to finagle something try to get a little bit of camera angle there for the next race but uh trying something new i think the product's good uh, i think it's chinmount.com or something but 
they've got custom mounts that are made specifically for helmets. The problem is the attachment, the GoPro attachment that I had for the mount um, just didn't quite provide enough relief for the, the angle that I needed. So I'm going to look around see if I can pick up a different GoPro mount potentially to make it work or maybe I just need to scrap that option and go with the mount that you that I'm running here which is uh, I think it's called pro shot mount it's just a chin mount it goes uh, goes on the helmet there Lap four, I was trying to stand up more and use a bit better uh, technique, but I just I found myself kind of getting off balance when I did that. Felt better going through things at times. I just need more seat time. So jumping back to, to lap two here now. Same spot on the track. rocks were a bit slippery here today. We didn't keep your momentum going.
I'll well, just know where to go here. I was kind of committed to this line at this point. Would have been more energy than what it was worth for me to go out and around. So having the, the race that we were having here today, I was like, I'll just sit back and wait. Well, he'll get out of there. I haven't seen official results to see how many riders they were in 35 plus B or C or not even they don't even have an age division on it just team C I guess is what we're riding here today but it was a big turnout again it looked like for the series this year I heard the PM class had over 250 riders you combine that with the AM probably another hundred there I'm guessing and the 50s were probably clo pushing close to, to 400 riders I'm guessing for the weekend extremely big turnout again so I know the line for Team C was it looked maybe 35 40 riders I'm estimating um, be curious to see what the final numbers um, are once the res results are posted but I, I, we finished uh, finished 12th on the day as I came through on the scoring monitor. Whether that was official or correct, I don't know yet. It may be something different. I think first lap I came through, I think we were 13, and then uh, lap four, we were 14, or 12, sorry. And um, so we stayed pretty consistent throughout the day. I think Deck was 15 first time through, and then 13, and then 12. I, I don't know what he was, lap three, probably somewhere right in that range, but jumping back to lap four here. Yes, I took the bypass both of my laps here today. First time I came through, it was bottleneck so bad down in there, it didn't make sense to go through. And by the time I came through on this lap, I didn't even feel like going through that section. So I skipped it both laps. Uh, you'll see it off here on the right as we go through the, the, you'll see the log and the tire section up here. And I believe there's some riders down, kind of hung up in it again there. So the way I kind of fought the track all day, has, I, I was taking the easy route out, not gonna lie.
gonna say hats off to whoever marked the trail out. I know, I know Zach said he, our district uh, president, had a had a part in this laying out the trail. Everything's real well marked. Um, any area like right here, you see that you could have potentially just gone off straight, ribboned off well. There was never a time where I felt like didn't know where I needed to go next or never saw anybody that had straight off course anywhere. You saw some ribbon cuts here and there, but um, that, that happens. People overshoot stuff and ribbons get taken out, but overall the course was really well laid out. Watch carefully up here, you're gonna see me get by Eli Tomac. Could have been Christian Craig, not sure. Anyway, got around them.
so there was no bypass for the bridge today they just had us cut down through the gully here I'm assuming that's because the bridge was extremely slippery to start the day So by the final lap, this really started to tack up and become like a sticky dirt almost, like a sticky clay. And I mean, traction was great, it was just, it was all rutted out, it beat up so bad I just, I couldn't carry any speed through it anyway. I saw people getting around me carrying plenty of speed, but it just wasn't for me. Oh, that was a deep rut, so I st stuck my, tipped over there and got off balance and went to put my foot down. and. My foot went down about 18 inches into that rut, and down I went. Our next hair scrambles at Whiskey Creek, which was a new new event for last year. I believe first time that we'd ran there, and uh, I didn't get a chance to run it myself. I had broken ribs at the time from a crash I had in Portland, but um, Braden was able to run there last year. We've got video of that hair scramble out on our YouTube channel. Check that out. Um, I plan on running Team C again with Deck for that event, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get a top 10 this time. Like I said, we were 12th this go-round, and 
I think I think we can get top ten. We just I gotta get a little bit better cardio going, I think. And uh, do a little training between now and then, maybe ride <laughs> ride a couple times and uh, I think we can get there. So a little bit longer here, we're gonna come out onto the moto track and I did something a little bit different. Uh, did a side-by-side -side video of my lap two versus lap four on the moto track to see how they compared and you'll see how those come out coming up here shortly. there I got kind of sucked down to the right there towards that water lost lost some time there and that soft stuff just couldn't couldn't get momentum going again there for a minute
so that concludes one lap around Battle Creek Motorcycle Club's 2022 Hair Scramble course. Thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate the support. You guys checking out the video. So see you guys at the next race.